Entanglement is a spooky quantum phenomenon that annoyed Albert Einstein and has fascinated physicists ever since. Once thought to be in the realm of speculation, the phenomenon has been demonstrated in many experiments and is now fully accepted by the scientific community. Entanglement is a, a way for particles or quantum bits of information to communicate their states to a destination. The quantum internet will need repeaters to transmit information over long distances, and these repeaters will rely on entanglement to do so. The first notable discussion of this phenomenon was the 1993 paper in Physical Review Letters entitled Teleporting a Quantum State, and it is the basis of the code I have written for you. This Jupyter Notebook demonstrates the soundness of the physics presented in that paper. It uses the SymPy library for computer algebra to validate the formulas in the paper and prove the soundness of its conclusions. There are classes to represent quantum objects and quantum operations. The first part covers teleportation and the second part simulates an extension of the teleportation idea to transmit a qubit via a repeater. In both parts, assert statements are used at the end to verify that the received qubit matches what was sent regardless of the measurement outcome. So let's dive into the code. There are no numbers in this computation. It is all algebra performed automatically using SymPy, NumPy, and the SciPy libraries. Alice has a particle in a state unknown to her and she wishes to communicate that state to Bob by entangling it with a second particle. Basically, she imprints the state on the second particle and sends that particle to Bob. In order for Bob to decode the state, he needs two bits of classical information from Alice, her measurement results. Here are the steps. First, Alice prepares particle three in an entangled bell state called a singlet state. Second, she measures particles one and two in the Bell basis, getting one of four possible outcomes. There are four outcomes because there are two particles, each one spin one half. Bob receives the measurement results, and depending on their value, he chooses a gate to apply to the state of particle three, a quantum operation. Particle 3 is now in a replica state matching the original state of Particle 1. This Jupyter Notebook com computes the state of Particle 3 before and after Bob applies his gate and demonstrates that the state of the particle is, in, is an exact replica of the initial state of Particle 1. This verifies equations 5 and 6 in the paper. To do this, the code defines Python classes for quantum states and operators and overloads the multiplication operator to perform quantum operations and tensor products of quantum operations. The second part of the notebook, entanglement swapping, applies the teleportation idea to a more complicated situation, the quantum internet. There is a transmitting station a receiving station, and a quantum repeater between them. There are five qubits, the data qubit, two link qubits for transmission, and two link qubits for reception. In accordance with the no cloning principle, the data qubit is destroyed when it is transmitted. Here are the import statements for the two library for the three libraries numpy handles matrix operations and computes eigenvalues scipy handles the kronecker product which is a specialized matrix product for tensors simpy does the algebra the function get states takes a density operator or a density matrix as its input and returns the corresponding states which it extracts by getting the eigenvectors. It only saves those states 
for which the probability is non-zero. Here is the initial state. It is a general superposition of quantum states 0 and 1. A and B are symbols, just like the symbols in a formula in algebra. They can represent any complex number. Bob has to examine the state of particle 3, and we simulate this by forming the density matrix for the third for for the combined quantum state of the three particle system and then performing a partial trace over the first two subsystems. Here are the Python classes. A tensor represents the quantum operator and multiplication indicated by an asterisk implements the tensor product of two operators acting on subspaces of the system Hilbert space, that is on one or more of the three particles. It uses the Kronecker matrix product. Q state represents a quantum state and multiplication of a tensor by a state implements or simulates the action of a quantum operation on a quantum state. The method bra ket forms the outer product of a ket and a bra. These are objects in the direct no Dirac notation. This is for constructing projection operators, for example, for measurement, and for forming density matrices. Here I've indicated the correspondence between the mathematical symbols and the objects in my code. Here are the two classes. As you can see, they're very simple. I need four gates. These correspond to the quantum operations that Bob would perform on his particle. The identity identity gate is there because we want to operate on selected particles and not on all three particles at once. The X, Y, and Z gates are the transformations that Bob needs to use to reconstruct the transmitted qubit. Alice performs her measurement in the Bell basis and so in order to simulate that we need the Bell states represented in two bases. The diagonal basis where it's like a matrix with ones on the diagonals and the computational basis. For example, phi plus, the Bell state phi plus, is a superposition of two particles spin up and two particles spin down. Or you can say two particles in state 0 and two particles in state 1. There are four Bell states because there are two spin one-half particles. Here is the projection operator that we use to simulate uh, Alice's entangling of the two particles. Here is the tensor product. Identity, because we're not operating on particle 3, the Bell gate for particles 1 and 2, and the state. Alice's measurement has four possible outcomes because there are four Bell states. So we form a projection operator. That's how you do measurements in quantum mechanics. Then to get the state of the third particle, we form the density matrix using the bra ket method of my class. Then we compute the partial state, partial trace, to eliminate particles 1 and 2 and retain particle 3. We get the state so that Bob can apply his gate his quantum process to that state. Depending on the measurement outcome, which is the value of the variable i, Bob applies a y gate, an x gate, a z gate, or no gate. Finally, the assert statement verifies that the quantum states are equivalent. In quantum mechanics, two states are equivalent if they're parallel, so I form a cross product just like you would do in freshman physics, a cross product in two dimensions and require it to be zero. That's the condition for two vectors to be parallel. Now I generalize this code to the more complicated case where there are five quantum bits and we're using a repeater to transmit a quantum bit to a distant destination. Here's the 
function that produces the initial state is just a general superposition of 0 and 1, just like we had before. And here is the code that simulates the process. I form a gate for Alice entangling qubits 1, not Alice, but the transmitting station entangling qubits 1 and 2, leaving qubits 0, 3, and 4 unchanged. Now, you'll note that the order appears reversed, and this is the way it is with tensor products. The first factor in the product is the last component, the last particle, the last qubit. The next one is the fourth qubit. Then comes the gate for qubits 1 and 2. Finally, identity again, because we're not modifying the state of qubit 1, qubit 0. Finally, we multiply by the state of qubit 1 applying this is this is how one entangles the repeater also has to entangle qubits 3 and 4 with a similar operation but because we're leaving qubits 0 1 and 2 unchanged we have three identity operators sandwiched in the middle of the product Unlike teleportation, there's a pair of Bell measurements. The first measurement is performed on qubits 1 and 2 by the repeater, and it has four outcomes, and the variable I1 indicates the measurement outcome. We form the projection operator to simulate the measurement, apply it to the state. Then we simulate the second measurement, which is performed on qubits 0 and 1, and again, four possible outcomes. Finally, the receiving station has to examine the fifth qubit, qubit 4 in other words. And we simulate this again, like in teleportation, by forming a density matrix, extracting the state from it using NumPy. Here are the 16 measurement outcomes. Four outcomes for the first measurement, four outcomes for the second measurement. So for the combination, there are 16 possible outcomes and 16 different quantum gates that have to be applied to the received qubit. Finally, we have the assert statement, which again verifies that the quantum states are parallel, indicating that they have been transmitted successfully. If you would like to download a copy of this Jupyter Notebook, go to my GitHub repository. I'll post a link in the comments below the YouTube video. If the comments aren't video, you might have to click on a button to get access to them.